What's up guys, Scully here from the Blue Coconut family and welcome back to another City Skylines tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at water physics within the game. Now this is a slightly expanded version of um, the base game tutorial because although you can slightly manipulate physics of the water in the base game, uh, there is an asset and a mod that is really helpful for doing this inside your world. So I'm going to link below the um, extra landscaping tool. It's a very, very good mod. It allows you to place down water source blocks as we're looking at that. But I'll talk over how uh, water physics works in game. And it's got a quite a unique um, kind of aspect to that. You know, the game is very good in having this water physics. Yes, it does make the game slightly more laggy, um, but it does add an extra kind of level of realism in it. So I've I started this new world. I'm not in my tutorial world because I thought, well, I'll start fresh so I can show you. Um, I've got all the areas unlocked just so I can show you the different regions and this I chose this because it's got lots of water features in it that I can show you. So let's start off on basics. Water flows downhill. That's pretty obvious. You know, nothing in nothing I'm going to show you today will surprise you or shock you. Water flows downhill, usually from some form of some form of site or spring at the top. And normally in base game, if you do not have any mods that allow you to buy extra tiles, these all these source areas are out of reach of your main kind of buying area, so you can't actually get to them. So you can't really manipulate much. Um, but because I've got this asset that allows me to buy extra tiles, you're able to see exactly what you know is happening. So I can see this is the uh, base area. This is the spawn area, and then they've uh, carved through two channels: one going this way through a small little gully, then past some rocks and such and then going out to the sea the other side going through a slightly bigger river and such going down and flow so that's basics is water flows nicely second objects inside the water affect it so you can see here that the rock in the middle is actually stopping the water on this side and slowing it down causing the water to have to go round it now i can show you that even better by let me grab some rocks I want some biggish rocks, no, or even a bigger rock, that will do. So if I grab some more rocks and I create some form of like barrier, once the water engine updates, and you'll see it happen any second, there we go, it's starting to happen, uh, we'll just fill in the gap here, you'll see that I've now forced the water to back up on one side, Ooh, there you go. back up on one side, and to have to ride up and over the little water barrier I've built. Um, now this has two effects. One is making water on this side a lot higher um, and a lot slower now. And the second effect is it's made this side the water a lot um, a lot lower, so it is a lot shallower. Um, but it has also made the water a lot faster because there's a lot more water happening over a small space. Um, and then the side effect that it's had is water is now finding a new path down the side here because this is now a faster route. So you can see that it is a really good way of creating kind of, in the base game, some little natural kind of white water sections in here. So if I delete that little middle bit, you'll see that this is now going to be kind of a third route for water to go. Um, I'm going to just open up a little bit more. And you'll see that this is the area the water wants to go. So it's going to make that bit nice and choppy through there. So yeah, uh, let me leave these down just so we don't have a whole water issue here in the future. Okay, so that's the basics. So all you know, water flows downhill and we know that water is held up by objects. And that's any object in the game. So that is very helpful to know. Now, let's move on to the sea. Now the sea is constantly moving. You'll see that if I zoom in, it does have texture, it's not still or anything. And if you actually click on the water kind of tile, and uh, look. if you choose something that requires a little bit of flow, you'll see that the, although this bit of the sea doesn't really move much, you know, it might have a couple of arrows in it. If you come towards the edge, you do see that, uh, you do see, uh, you see that, um, it does have movement in there, so from this side it is travelling inward, that's what these arrows indicate, and it tra travels inwards on three sides, um, and then there'll be a side where it actually does allow it to drain out. Uh, still in, 
So it must be this side, but this side is land. Okay, there'll be somewhere. It must be on a corner somewhere. There'll be somewhere on here where uh, the water... So yeah, on all but one of the sides... Yeah, it's on one of these. They, they do hot swap it, so it might be that I'm just travelling around it. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, on all but uh, one of the sides, water will be travelling into the map to cause um, some tides and also some movement of water. And on the last side, it will be travelling, it will be flowing out of the world um, to stop the world from flooding, essentially. So it's constantly pumping water in and uh, it will be pumping water out. So... That's the basic water, now let's move on to what this mod does. So the mod for extra landscaping amongst other things also allows you to manipulate water sources and oops, um, sea level. So if we look at the sea level one first, so move sea level is a really simple indication. So if you click it and you click in the sea, you see that it becomes selected. We can see very clearly that the sea level is here and you can see how far up river it will affect. So you can see up to this point, the sea is actually filling to this point. And that's what you're telling it. That's You're not affecting anything else. You're affecting how far the game says, I want to fill the sea too. And you can see that actually, despite um, the level being a lot higher on that beach than it actually is, uh, because of other, f other um, things are happening in the world, so maybe the tide's out at the moment and the you know, the current isn't quite there. You can see it's actually gradually getting there. You All that level is doing is telling the game where you want the sea level to be at its highest. Now, with mod allows you to drag it. And so you can say, right, I only want a very low sea. And then you'll see the game will automatically update. Now, it doesn't drain away or anything cool like that. It literally just grabs it and then just is off. Now, I don't know if that's quite cool, but that is also quite, you know, diverse. Naturally, you can also make the entire world flood. So you can see it's just updated there. So we now have some, like, kind of marshlands, and we can see that this, this road is now underwater and everyone's drowning. Um, so if the game, if the world that you're in currently isn't, um, the sea level isn't what you want, maybe it's too high, too low, or something else, then this is a good way of manipulating it very quickly just to get it. To exactly where you want it now let me reset it to something more manageable yeah there we go now let's move on to water source blocks now as a simple if we click in here we have got this water source now you can see here it acts like a little tray now it looks a little bit like a petri dish um, sort of thing um, but yeah so the way how to play with this is you'll see that my cursor is right in the middle of this tray uh, if I look from the top, but from the side, it looks a little bit weird. It looks like it's at the bottom. Now, the thing to note is the water source will be being, will be, be placed right underneath your cursor, not in the petri dish. So, despite where you look, it's where your cursor is clicking. So, if you look in here, it's on the cursor because the petri dish is actually floating. If you can see there, okay. So, it'd be placed on this tree, despite and not in the sky. Now, you can see on this left-hand side, you've got water options, and it currently says 1.00. And you can adjust this, and it goes all the way down to 00, or to 001 there, and up to 1. Now, this here is your kind of fill speed and your fill capacity in percentages. So, 1 is actually 100%, um, and then 01, which is technically the lowest, is uh, 1% and they both have their features. So let's have a look at this. So if we place down a 100% source block here, we can see that as it spawns up, this is 100% water. Uh, this is a water source at 100%. You can see it creates a big mushroom of water as it flows. And if we speed up time, you'll see there that that initial mushroom does fade, but then it creates this huge rippling mass of water and that is quite a lot of water you are now having to deal with and if you place one of these down accidentally in your city in the wrong place you can see how quite quickly you're going to be in a lot of trouble so to remove one we've made by mistake you can simply right click and it disappears now unlike the water um oh sorry the sea level uh, this does have to drain away it doesn't automatically clear so you can see here luckily most of this is this land is sloped out to sea, so this water is going to drain away quickly. 
but you can imagine if you had a city in its way you're going to be a little bit stuffed so just come to keep an eye out now let's have a look at the opposite end of that let's have a look at one percent uh, one percent there you go now you can see already the petri dish is a little bit smaller so we can place it on this little rock we can see they're a little bit smaller a little bit more manageable and quite nice so yeah that's pretty good so that's the water source and we can see there that that's just going to keep on pumping out water out to sea uh, forever and you'll be able to see that actually these little water sources here are exactly that all what this mod's done is allows you to have the ability to place these water source blocks into the world um, you know, within game. There's even a little one over here to create this little kind of inlet, which is quite nice. Now, I want to create a pond, which is you know not too unreasonable. Create a little pond. Now I've got a little divot in the um, world here. We can see uh, it's quite nice. Um, I'm going to put some sand around I think, there we go, it's quite nice. Now what I want is I want water to stay in it. Now water evaporates, uh, If I so any lay, uh, low laying water, so this has found a low point. Now water doesn't just stay there, um, it doesn't stay there for an you know, infinite amount of time, it will over time evaporate out um, and is very useful. So you know, don't worry if you've got a flood in your city, the water will over time evaporate. Um, so yeah, so that's always something worth noting. Now that does also have a downside, but if you create a pond, so for example, let me put in a 1%, let's get some water in here. Okay. That should be about right. So yeah, you go, there's my water. Now the downside to this is that is going to evaporate, so that's not going to stay there forever. Um, so that's quite sad to see but actually is it actually possible to make a pond yes it is so you could quite quite happily you know what for things people have done past create like an outflow of this pond or this lake into the ocean and then just have a constant source happening but there is actually a trick to it so if I click down a water source what you can see if you click over it is you get you know everything goes a little bit gray can you see that so what that actually is, is a fill line. So exactly the same as the sea level. You can drag this down. There you go. That is a fill line for this, for this water source. So it says, basically to that water source is, keep filling the lake until this point. So as soon as the water's at this point, stop filling. Now we can see that it's already there for a little bit. And at 1%, that's gonna be quite slow. Now we can have it at 3%. And what you can do is you can just click it and it updates the water source without you having to replace it. So this is now a 3% water source. And we can see that, you know, there you go. And there's the water there. Um, and all it's going to do is going to keep filling it to that point and then as a little bit evaporates, it just fills a little bit more. And this is great for if you have um, a still pond that you want to create, um, then you can, in theory, get drinkable water from this. This is a fully drinkable water, as long as you don't pollute it or anything, this is fully drinkable. We can see now that that pond is now very still and isn't going anywhere. Now you can create a little bit of flow in these ponds. So if I then create a second thing here and create it to the same level. There you go, so you can see that there's two little levels in there. We can see that it is now flowing quite nicely. Now there is a, uh, another feature to the water sources that is worth noting is that they also act as a suction. So what I mean by that is I can create a third one here and I can move its level all the way down to the bottom of the lake and what's that job is is to it because it realizes oh wait there's water at a higher level than me or than the level I have put it in I must suck some of that water up now you see here this is quite an extreme addition um, but you can play around with it amongst yourself 
me do that. You can see that as water is created from the other two because it is lower than the level specified on the fill level, uh, the, the other one is sucking it up and is just going into the ether and away. Um, and it's trying to suck it out of, out to that level. So there you go, that's pretty much it. Pretty well covered. You can see easily there that water sources can not only produce water but also suck up water. You can see how you can create a pond with its with the water source fill level uh, without it overflowing and flooding cities. And we've also looked at how you can change the sea level either to an extreme low or an extreme high. So yeah. I think that's pretty much covered. If you've enjoyed this video and it's been very helpful for you, hit that, hit that like button. And yeah, also remember if you really did enjoy it and uh, you feel that maybe some other videos might help, hit that subscribe button. You guys, you know what to do. I've been Scotty from Blue Coconut Family. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.